Today we're diving into one of Earth's most incredible mysteries, the Mariana Trench. This isn't just a deep hole in the ocean, it's like the Mount Everest of the deep sea, but in reverse. Imagine plunging down 36,000 feet deeper than Everest is tall. That's the Challenger Deep for you, the deepest known point in our oceans. It's so deep that if you were down there, the pressure would be like having 50 jumbo jets squishing you. Talk about an extreme underwater squeeze. Now you might think nothing could possibly live in such an intense place, but guess what? Life finds a way. The Mariana Trench is teeming with creatures that could be straight out of a sci-fi movie. We're talking about weird fish like the Hadal snailfish and unique microorganisms that don't just survive, but thrive in the pitch dark, crushing depths and freezing cold. These animals are the ultimate survivalists, adapting to a world that would seem totally alien to us. The journey to explore this eerie abyss is like something out of an adventure novel. The first people to reach the Challenger Deep were Jacques Picard and Don Walsh in 1960, cruising down in the Trieste. And then in 2012, filmmaker James Cameron himself took the plunge in his Deep Sea Challenger. Today we've got robots and remote operated vehicles doing the dangerous work, diving down to bring back secrets from this mysterious world. But why should we care about this deep, dark trench? Well, it's a crucial puzzle piece in understanding our planet. The trench is a subduction zone, basically a giant geological recycling bin where one of Earth's plates slides under another. This process is essential for our planet's life cycle. Plus, the trench is home to hydrothermal vents, these underwater geysers that could hold clues to how life started on Earth. Looking ahead, there's still so much we don't know about the Mariana Trench. Future explorations could reveal new creatures, unseen geological wonders, and maybe even answer big questions about life in extreme environments. Studying this place isn't just about satisfying our curiosity. It could help us understand if life could exist in the extreme conditions of other planets. Some folks think of the Mariana Trench as just a dark, lifeless pit, but they couldn't be more wrong. It's a vibrant, albeit bizarre, ecosystem full of mysteries waiting to be solved. Exploring the trench is like exploring another world, right here on our own planet. It's one of the last true frontiers, a place that challenges our understanding of life and our planet, a deep-sea enigma calling out for adventurers and dreamers to uncover its secrets. The deepest and most mysterious part of our oceans is like entering a world from another dimension. This place, my friends, is where the giants of the sea call home. I'm talking about deep sea gigantism, a phenomenon as fascinating as it is mind-boggling. Let's embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of these enormous creatures lurking in the abyss. Picture this, the giant squid, a creature of legend, with tentacles as long as a bus, lurking in the darkness of the deep sea. And it's not just squids, we're talking about colossal amphipods and other invertebrates that grow to sizes you'd think were straight out of a storybook. In the deep sea, bigger is the norm, not the exception. So why are these creatures so massive? There are a few theories floating around. First, there's the idea that the chilly waters down there encourage a larger body size. It's like wearing a big cozy coat to keep warm, but in biological terms. Then there's the oxygen-rich water, which might allow for these larger sizes as oxygen is crucial for all that metabolic jazz that keeps creatures alive. Another theory? Well, in the deep sea, it's not like you can just swim over to a cafe for a snack. Food is scarce, so being bigger means you can store more energy and travel farther to find a meal. And don't forget the immense pressure in the trench. It's possible that being larger helps these animals withstand the squeeze of the deep. The adaptations of these deep-sea giants are straight out of a sci-fi film. Many of them light up the pitch-black ocean with their own bioluminescent glow. It's like having built-in headlights. And the pressure down there is enough to crush a submarine, but these creatures are cruising along, thanks to their specialized bodies. Exploring this underwater world is no easy feat. The conditions are extreme, so every mission down there is a big deal. It's a place where we're constantly finding new species and learning about the strange ways they live. And let's talk about sea monsters. You know, like the Kraken from the old sailor tales. These legends might have been inspired by real encounters with deep sea giants. Imagine a sailor long ago, coming face to face with a creature like the giant squid. That'd be a story to tell for generations. As we continue to explore the Mariana Trench, who knows what other secrets we'll uncover. This place is a frontier for science, a realm of unknown giants waiting in the depths. So what's the deal with deep-sea gigantism? 
It's like Mother Nature's own experiment in scaling up. In the murky, high-pressure depths of the trench, some creatures grow to massive sizes, way larger than their cousins in shallower waters. We're talking about the giants of the deep like the legendary giant squid, whose tentacles could easily wrap around a whale, and the colossal isopods which look like they've come straight out of a sci-fi flick. But why do these creatures get so big? There are a few theories cooking in the pot. One idea is about temperature. In the icy depths of the trench, being bigger might help conserve heat. Then there's the scarcity of food. With meals being a rare luxury in the deep sea, larger creatures can store more energy and travel longer distances for food. And let's not forget oxygen. The cold waters down there are rich in dissolved oxygen, which might support the larger body sizes of these deep sea dwellers. And the predators, they're fewer down in the deep, so species can grow larger without constantly looking over their shoulders. It's a different world down there, a place where size matters in a whole new way. Now let's talk about the stars of the show. The giant isopods are like the tanks of the ocean floor, armored and oversized. Then there are the giant tube worms, living near hydrothermal vents, relying on the Earth's geothermal energy. And of course, the mysterious squids, the real-life krakens, elusive and seldom seen, but absolutely fascinating. But exploring this world is no walk in the park. Every dive, whether by humans in submersibles or by remote operated machines, is a venture into one of the most extreme environments on Earth. These rare glimpses we get of these creatures are priceless, each one adding a piece to the vast puzzle of deep sea life. Studying these giants isn't just about satisfying our curiosity, it gives us insights into the dynamics of deep sea ecosystems. It's a glimpse into a world that operates by a whole different set of rules. And the adaptations these creatures have developed to survive in such extremes, that's a lesson in resilience and survival that goes beyond just biology. Now diving into the deep blue to explore the ocean's big-time residents, we're talking about marine giants, from real colossal creatures to the stuff of legends. The ocean's got its own set of rules when it comes to size, and some of its inhabitants are, well, literally off the scales. Let's start with the superstar of the deep, the giant squid. These massive invertebrates can stretch up to 43 feet. That's like stacking three cars end to end. They've got eyes as big as dinner plates, perfect for spotting light in the deep, dark ocean. But despite their size, they're super elusive and there's still so much we don't know about them. Then there's the colossal squid, the heavyweight champion of the deep. Even bigger than the giant squid, these guys can reach up to 46 feet. They've got these rotating hooks on their tentacles that make them formidable predators, but they're also on the menu for some, like the sperm whale. Now let's talk about the Kraken, the mythical sea monster that's been the stuff of sailors' nightmares for centuries. Originating from Scandinavian folklore, this legendary creature is often depicted as a monstrous squid or octopus, taking down ships and causing havoc. It's thought that real giant cephalopods inspired these tales, showing just how much the ocean's mysteries have captivated humans over the ages. The ocean's got more giants up its sleeve. Take the whale shark, for instance, the largest fish in the sea, reaching lengths of 40 feet or more. But despite their size, they're gentle giants, feeding on tiny plankton. Then there's the giant oarfish, a real-life sea serpent stretching up to 36 feet. And don't forget the lion's mane jellyfish with tentacles that can stretch longer than a blue whale. Studying these marine giants is no easy feat. They live in parts of the ocean that are tough to reach, like deep trenches or remote open waters. And sightings, they're as rare as a winning lottery ticket, making it tough to learn about their behavior and ecology. In the end, these oceanic giants are more than just big fish or cephalopods in a big pond. They're symbols of the unexplored and mysterious aspects of our world's oceans, a reminder of how much we've yet to discover in the vast blue depths. So, next time you're gazing out at the sea, just imagine the giants lurking beneath those waves. It's a whole other world down there.